Hello my fellow creative spirits! So today I just wanted to do a quick video about how to be more cost effective. So I just wanted to share my tips today on how I get some art materials on the cheap. As you may know, being an artist can be a little bit expensive sometimes and you want to be able to know how to hunt for the deals. So I got my handy dandy coffee right here and let's begin with tip number one. So the first tip that I wanted to give is to be aware of discounts that are going on. Um, just be careful sometimes with uh, coupons. For example, Michaels always has a 40% off coupon, sometimes a 50% off coupon at any one item. But just be aware that usually they overprice most of their stock so that they can be running that coupon all the time. So I usually go there and I use a coupon only after I've researched online if there is a cheaper price for that product and if I can wait. So for example, um, recently I ended up returning a bunch of my items from Michaels because I bought Galkid, Gamsol, and a few other um, gambling products and I found out that they were actually pricing it three times the price than what I could buy it online. So what I ended up doing, even with the coupon, you're still getting not that great of a deal compared to if you just buy it online. So a few stores that I like to use are Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama and you can do kind of comparison shopping there. So just be aware of these little tricks that some companies use to make it appear that you're getting a deal when in fact you're not. When you do go to places like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or maybe if you don't live in the States, whichever uh, art store that you have nearby, uh, also check the discount section so you might find some items that are an amazing price that you can't get anywhere else. So for example, something that I got on clearance that was amazing was this this brand, it's called M. Graham and & Company, and I got this tube of paint, which is normally about $8 to $10, sometimes even more, and I got it for $1.99. I got all of my paints for between $1 to $3. So just check the clearance section, though that's kind of a luck kind of thing, but if you constantly check eventually you are going to find a few things that might be a better price. And this is a good quality paint. I did my research and this has good reviews. Another part to being aware of discounts is to also be aware of when these big sales are going on. So for example Black Friday and before school sales, um, back to school sales, they usually have these amazing store-wide sales going on where they'll have canvases that are 70% off the original ticketed price. So usually when I, I usually hold off on buying and then buy in bulk when they have a one of those big sales going on. Now my tip number two is to start small. Prioritize what your most important supplies are going to be. So I definitely recommend just making a list of everything that you want and figure out what do you need now? What will help you to create something now? The fact of the matter is to do oil painting you don't really need all too much. Um, all of this other extra stuff, it's just extra. Tip number three is to research the different materials. So you want to make sure that you're going to be getting the most bang for your buck. So research the different oil paint brands, find which ones has the highest rating for the lowest price. So um, I actually did this when I was looking for paintbrushes. I found paintbrushes that were four star and up, like four out of five stars and up. And I found that some of the ones that were cheaper had the same star rating as some paintbrushes that can be $200 and $300 per brush. So just make sure that you research and do your due diligence before you decide to go uh, shopping. And this will help you be more empowered. And sometimes I take my phone along with me and kind of do a little comparison shopping. Tip number four is to uh, check locally if, uh, if there's any secondhand items. So uh, Craigslist is my best friend when it comes to buying frames, buying easels. Uh, when you buy secondhand, you could be uh, getting something even better than something that could be store bought. Like sometimes I've even seen uh, Craigslist ads for things like uh, oil paints, where you can buy all of their oil paints. It'll be someone who doesn't do oil painting anymore, and they're getting rid of everything. So just keep in mind that you can check on there, and sometimes you'll find something, sometimes you won't. I actually got this massive frame that is absolutely amazing and I got it for $30 from an antique dealer. Sometimes these people are just trying to get rid of it and they're willing to get rid of their uh, secondhand items. Also check local yard sales and stores. I knew someone who also got uh, Prismacolor color pencils at a farmer's market 
for, I think they said it was $5 and they got like a 25 pack and that's usually unheard of and it was the uh, more expensive uh, Prismacolor Premier so just keep that in mind as well. And my final tip is to do it yourself when you can. There are times that making something yourself, uh, an art supply, a material, can be more cost effective and come out even better than if you were to buy it at a big box store. So what do I mean by this? So for example, uh, about a year ago I bought a palette, it was this really fancy schmancy palette. I spent $20 on it with a coupon at Michael's and it was terrible quality. It was plastic, it was it was started to crack, the paint, I had, didn't have a way to clean it off. It was kind of my fault because I didn't really research what kind of palettes to use for oil paint but it was just a waste of money. And just recently I found out uh, by watching Lena Danya that she makes her own palettes. So um, what she does is she gets the glass from a picture frame and you kind of secure the edges with electrical tape. I think that's what she said she does, but I secured mine the edges with electrical tape, uh, put some uh, white paper under it so you can see the colors better. And it literally took five minutes to assemble. And so far it's the best palette I've ever had because when you clean it, you just scrape it with a razor and it's just, it cost me less than a dollar and it was even more effective than the $20 palette that I bought from a big box store. So that's just one of many ways that you can create your own things. I've known artists uh, who create their own easels and they look amazing because they're custom built to fit their needs. I've also seen people who built their own mall sticks, which are relatively easy right now. I'm actually using a broomstick <laughs> as my mall stick. Um, I do want to eventually create a better one made out of wood. Just do your research, you know, you can Google do-it-yourself projects and it'll explain to you exactly how to do it. I hope that my tips have helped you guys and encouraged you guys that it doesn't, you don't need a lot of money to be able to create. What's the most important is that you are creating and Trust me, when I first started out, I didn't have money. Um, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to make it, so I had to cut corners whenever I could. And it's only now that I'm able to buy some more expensive equipment, and even then, I try to look for the most cost-effective whenever possible. Um, I hope you guys are more economically conscious now of your art supplies, and I hope that you guys continue to create. So besides that, make sure that you follow me on Instagram and Facebook if you don't already, if you like content like this. Also, let me know if you guys like the format of this video. Um, I'm not exactly working on that many personal projects right now, so it might be a little while until time lapse, so I kind of want to do more uh, tutorial videos and all of that. So let me know if you guys like this video and you would like to see more like it. Uh, and then finally, I will see you guys next time, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye!